Hail to the king, baby. Would you like to hear a theory of birth and rebirth? A theory of creation and destruction? Well, today I will explain that theory and I will explain why creating a narrative without telling a story helps to inspire creativity within others to forge their own story. There's a magic within the design philosophy of visual storytelling that is heightened within video games and choosing specifically not to directly tell you a story and have everything focus on the audio-visual design of the world. The game feels alien yet familiar in a weird yet relatable way. It reminds me of the way From Software develops the main form of storytelling for the Dark Souls games, or how Giant Squid developed Abzu. Quotes from Matt Nava and Miyazaki explain the feeling and magic behind that design. Miyazaki once stated in an interview with Gaming Bolt, I'm a fan of stories that require you to use a little bit of your imagination in order to really understand the whole thing. When I was young, I used to enjoy reading books that were too hard for me, where I could only read maybe half the kanji, and using my imagination to fill in the gaps. I wanted to see if I could bring that kind of experience to a video game, where you use your imagination to bridge those gaps. Matt Nava stated in an interview with the site Game Developer, I think the powerful thing that video games can do is they can take you to another world, Nava says. Abzu taps into this power considerably, seeking ways to transfer you from your couch and into another world. It's wonderful to escape from our world from time to time, but it's better to come back from that imaginary realm that a game takes you to with something to reflect upon and relate to our own existence and our own lives. These storytelling methods are used very well in Cocoon by game director Jeppe Carlson and the whole team at Geometric Interactive. That design philosophy keeps you immersed and constantly wondering what's going through the very alien world with surprisingly advanced technology, and some of it is a bit organic, but way more tame than something like Scorn's H.R. Geiger-esque world. Jeppe Carlson and Jacob Schmid brought a lot of their experience in audiovisual design from their time at Playdead working on Inside. The way the entire narrative, if you want to call it that, is slowly delivered to you via the environment and musical choice is very reminiscent of that game or even Blade Ed's Limbo. The environmental and stylistic choices really amplify everything you're doing on your journey, solving puzzles, and the music is really special in how when you're doing a puzzle properly, the game plays a certain little musical note to give you a clue you're on the right track, which I actually really love. It really helps to elevate the whole game when the music perfectly sets the tone of each area. Cocoon will inspire others to create their own story for many years to come, I'm sure of that. The game is ripe for theories and speculation, similar to the aforementioned Inside, which is stated really well in an interview with Peter Buckhart, a former Playdead employee by the site The Developer. The idea is that people can get whatever interpretation they want, and I know that in Inside, some of the artists even put in small hints here and there to what they maybe wanted to tell in the story but it's there for you to just basically interpret yourself. I've already came up with my own theory about Cocoon. Right here is where I will give you a heavy spoiler warning for the base game as well as the secret ending of the game recently found by the community. Some may think that our little insect-like friend carries the weight of the world on his back like the Titan Atlas from Greek myth, but not as punishment, instead from a duty to bring back order or help bring upon a new age for these many worlds we carry around in spheres that we see keep being manipulated and seeing them be worlds within worlds within worlds, within an ethereal sun that creates the galaxy, I suppose, at the end. That's one way to look at it, but I have another theory that I believe you were born to be a harbinger of destruction. The statues that look like you and even the guardians themselves are definitely connected somehow and you know how everything functions almost like the instinct of an insect. The twist is you're a false shepherd or an illusion to look like you're on this peaceful journey to help, but I believe once you reach your full potential at the end, you are now a destroyer like the demon Apophis who embodied chaos in ancient Egypt and was believed to be a monstrous serpent that threatened the very balance of the universe. In my own interpretation, you are going to consume these worlds and the galaxy or maybe the universe to either go on to another and repeat the cycle, or to allow some other force to recreate life. 
The secret ending seems to further cement this idea when what looks like a very colorful version of the Guardians travel to try and stop you from destroying everything. I believe Cocoon is a journey of birth and rebirth in the way that you were born and by the end, reborn into something entirely different, whether your true form or your destiny. It's a story of creation and destruction in the way everything was created by these guardians, and these worlds were created by the final boss, who seems to be a form of God, in a similar position as you at the end. You are the destructive force for moving the guardians and taking full control to gain power and consume the galaxy for one reason or another, but others are going to try and stop you from destroying all of creation. Cocoon is an insanely impressive and beautiful experience. I think it's one of the best puzzle adventure games I've ever played, and for sure some of the best since Portal or The Last Campfire. The game tells a beautiful yet dark story through its audiovisual design. It's a 10 out of 10 experience for me, and I'd love to know what theories you may have about your experience. I'll see you in the next one.